first thing I really want to talk about is that what is going to be hosting my website? Like which platform? And you really have to choose a platform that suits the business that you're running. Some platforms are better for certain types of businesses and some platforms are better for other types of businesses. So you just need to really do a little research and you know ask around on Facebook, ask around with your friends and you know other groups that you're a part of. Ask them which is the platform that you prefer and why. And sometimes you get just get on the most brilliant feedback and guidance from your peers. And so that's a great way to start. And then once you have that, you want to make sure that whatever platform company that you're using, that you've read their terms and condition and you have read their privacy policy and you have also read their security measures that they take for data. How are they protecting the product that you're putting out there and what are their protections and measures in with regards to data breach and security breach? And then once you've picked your platform, you are now maybe selling something online. And if you're selling something online, it's the same thing. You need to pick a payment processing system. And with that, you want to make sure the same thing that you read their terms and conditions, you read their privacy policy, and you also focus on their policies about data breach and security and online security. And you want to make sure that it's secure. You want to make sure that they're taking all the precautions they can take because ultimately you look bad if there is a data breach. And so you want to make sure that everything is as secure as you can have it. So you need to do that research with them as well. A lot of them are pretty much on the same level of charging and fees. So just kind of pick whichever one works best for you. Again, go out into the internet world, go out to the Google world, go out to Facebook world and ask away your questions because sometimes you just get the best advice from your peers. Another thing that you want to think about is your website itself. And when you are making a website, you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it easy to navigate and you want to make it where there's a call to action also. And the call to action is obvious, it's clear, and there's no confusion. I know that when I first made my first website, I later had one of my coaches audit my website last year. and literally there was like there's no call to action here and i personally felt like there was so many calls to action but clearly i was not right so i went in we revamped my website we you know did all that stuff and now i truly understand the difference and it's so important that there's a clear call to action and it's a simple website but it's nice to the eyes and it's easy to navigate and it just makes a world of difference especially when you have a lot to sell you want to make it easy for the person to get exactly what they want because if it takes four to five clicks you're done they're, they're done they're gonna leave you so you want to make sure that they can do what they need to do within like one to three clicks and you're good to go and then that kind of takes me into other parts of the website that you need to focus on. Just like how you're reading terms and conditions of companies that you're working with, you need to have a terms and conditions for your website. And that is usually, you see that when you get onto other people's website and sometimes when you're purchasing something from their website, there is a big box, I have read the terms and conditions and you have to have an affirmative check mark there, which you should definitely be implementing in your business as well. And the terms and conditions is essentially telling your users, the people that are coming onto your website on how to use your website. And what that means is what they can do on your website and what permissions you've given them on your website. And then also if you are selling on your website, you wanna have the refund and exchange policy abundantly clear there as well. So that way there's no confusion on what the return and the refund or the return and exchange policy are. And you also want to include the disclaimers and the disclosures. It's about the consumer having knowledge and transparency with whatever that they are looking at and observing and purchasing and reading. So you wanna have that transparency with your users, who is the consumer. And then that takes me to your privacy policy, which is required by law. And so you wanna have a good privacy policy on your website. Privacy policy is essentially telling your user how you're using the information that you gather from them when they're on your website. So whether that information is just a name or whether that is a phone number or whether that is any other information that you might be gathering, 
because they're purchasing or they're opting in for certain downloads or, you know, whatever they're doing, it's what are you doing with that information? Are you selling that information? Are you sharing that information? Are you just using it for your own analytics? Whatever it is, you need to disclose it so they are aware of how their personal information is being used.